The radial nerve crosses the axilla posterior to the axillary artery, then passes under the teres major and the latissimus dorsi to the posterior surface of the upper arm. It passes between the lateral and medial heads of the triceps brachii, coming into direct contact with the bone cortex at the middle third of the humeral shaft. It then passes along the anterolateral surface of the upper arm and between the brachialis and brachioradialis muscles to reach the anterolateral surface of the elbow. There it splits into two branches. The posterior motor branch goes around the radial neck between the heads of the supinator muscle, what we call the radial tunnel, to the posterior surface of the forearm where it becomes the posterior interosseous nerve. It continues between the extensor pollicis longus and abductor pollicis longus muscles to reach the interosseous membrane in the lower third of the forearm and the dorsal side of the carpal bones and the dorsal bundle of the scaphalinate ligament. The second anterior branch, a more superficial sensory branch, runs on the anterolateral surface of the forearm, deep to the brachioradial muscle. In the lower third, it passes under the brachioradial tendon to reach the lateral surface of the wrist beneath the skin and intersects the cephalic vein at the second extensor compartment and the reticulum of the first extensor compartment. To examine the radial nerve from the axilla to the wrist, the patient is placed in a seated position with the arm resting on a support for good stability and mobility during the examination. To start the examination, the radial nerve is easy to locate on the medial surface of the arm with the upper limb positioned in abduction and external rotation. It is located in direct context with the cortex of the humeral shaft, accompanied by the deep brachial artery. In the axilla, the radial nerve originates from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. It is located immediately posterior to the axillary artery, clearly visible here. It then plunges behind and outside along the posterior aspect of the arm to reach the bone cortex of the middle third of the humerus in a groove that is more or less easy to view on ultrasound, located between the medial and lateral heads of the triceps brachii always accompanied by the deep brachial artery, which is an easy way to locate it on ultrasound. The examination continues by positioning the transducer on the posterolateral surface of the upper arm, where the radial nerve is again seen in contact with the bone cortex. It then comes to the lower third of the anterolateral surface of the arm, piercing the lateral intermuscular septum, between the lateral head of the triceps brachii and the brachialis indicated here by the arrow. The radial nerve is then clearly seen between the brachialis muscle and the brachioradialis muscle here in a superficial position. At the anterolateral surface of the elbow the radial nerve splits into two branches, one lateral that's the deep motor branch of the radial nerve, and the other more medial, the superficial sensory branch. The deep branch of the radial nerve then goes around the radial neck, passing between the two heads of the supinator muscle, the superficial head here, and the deep head here. This canal is called the radial tunnel. On the sagittal views, the radial nerve is easily seen plunging within the radial tunnel and passing under the free edge of the superficial head of the supinator. This structure, which is fibrous in some and membranous in others, is called the arcade of froze and can potentially compress the radial nerve. After going around the neck of the radius, the deep branch of the radial nerve, still located between the two heads of the supinator, arrives in the posterior compartment of the forearm and becomes the posterior interosseous nerve. It is very clearly visible here between the extensor pollicis longus and the abductor pollicis longus. Then it plunges deep to the interosseous membrane. 
The posterior interosseous nerve becomes harder to see more distally in the forearm, but it is sometimes easily found by looking at the dorsal surface of the wrist right here, deep inside the extensor tendons, near the posterior fibres of the scaphalinate ligament. The sensory branch of the radial nerve is located medial to the motor branch here, at the end of the arrow, and deep in the brachioradialis muscle, indicated here. It continues along the anterolateral surface of the forearm, still deep in the brachioradialis. Then, in the distal third of the forearm, it passes under the brachioradial tendon to position itself lateral to it, and then pierces the superficial fascia, clearly visible here, to finish under the skin. There are many anatomical variants, with here, for example, a division with an ulnar branch that reaches the cephalic vein here, and a more radial branch that reaches the retinaculum of the first extensor compartment here. Compression of the deep branch of the radial nerve is clearly seen here at the arcade of froze. The ultrasound shows fusiform thickening, loss of fascicular appearance and hypoechogenicity of the deep branch. This appearance was confirmed by comparing with the axial views.